All right. I got the one and only Jeff Palmer in the house. I mean, a legit beast in the fitness industry. Um, first off, let me say, I, I don't mean to throw you under the bus, but you want to tell people how old you are? I'll be 59 in eight days. <laughs> if people see images of you online, I think they'll be blown away. I'm not just saying that. I get a lot of people because I'm heading into 53 saying, you know, Rich, I wish I, you know, look like you or whatever. They compliment you at our age. I want to look like you. <laughs> I'm just telling you, and I'm not just saying that to say that. You look incredible. I doubt I ever will. I definitely will. I do not have the discipline you have when it comes to food or many different things. Fitness is another thing, but when it comes to everything else, um, I can't compete with you. But um, let's kind of jump into this with you because you are the CEO and the founder of Clean Machine Plant-Based Fitness Nutrition. Is that basically you selling what plant-based foods and supplements strictly? What is that? To be honest, for me personally, uh, the reason why I named the company Clean Machine is uh, I had a breakthrough experience in 1985 that, um, that got me to stop doing drugs and drinking and everything else and cleaned up my life completely. It was, it was such an impactful event that I committed the rest of my life to helping others try to also enjoy the benefits of a clean clean living so I, i'm a i got my i was a, in college i was a biopsych major so i was looking at human physiology and i said this is a, an amazing machine that we're born into it's incredible so i wanted to focus on keeping this machine clean and i encourage other people to do that um, one of my passions is is to get people to eat more plants because of the health benefits to them and uh, to, to get them to encourage them not to take the drug path. Um, I'm 100% drug free, even at 59, no medications whatsoever. That's awesome. And people should know that, if I'm not mistaken, you have been a vegan since like 1985, right? Like 36 years. Yes, yes. It'll be 37 years in March. So... Yeah, I didn't even know there was a word vegan back then. I just said, look, I don't, I don't want to put any uh, animal products in my body ever again. Um, uh, it, it came out of, originally out of a compassion. I was suffering through clinical depression and uh, attempted to take my life a couple of times. Um, so that part was really tough for me. But when somebody helped me break through and relieved that mental and emotional and even physical pain, I was so grateful. I said, God, I got to, I got to help other people get a breakthrough experience. So I said, what are the two big things that most people do in their day to day life? They eat and they move. Right. So why not focus on the best optimal nutrition for the human experience and get them to move more? And I, I worked at um, 24 Hour Fitness, the largest gym and fitness chain in the world. Mm -hmm. And we did a study that, that uh, at that time, uh, looking why people dropped out of the gym. And the number one reason was I wasn't getting results fast enough. Sure. So I said, okay, but the reason they're not getting results is not because they're not exercising. Mm -hmm. It's because they're not including a healthy diet. It's like, it's like getting in the car and, and punching the gas with no gas in the tank. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't do anything. I don't care if it's a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. It still doesn't do anything. And, and I think people miss that connection that your body only works as well as what you put in it. Yeah, I got a friend, Chris Thompson. He's a nutrition guru. He talks about no workout will outwork out a bad diet. I guess something in that nature. I don't mean to screw it up, but no matter how hard you work out, if your diet is horrible, you are not going to get really, you know, really that good of a result compared to if you do, obviously. And that's kind of what you're preaching about here. You know, can I ask you something too? Back to, you had some setbacks in your life, losing your parents and your brother and all that. And I've heard you say that on podcasts, right? Falling into depression. Yes. And the thing I want to ask you too, when it came to you deciding to become a vegan, especially when very few people back then were doing that, I mean, even a vegetarian, I don't think was really that popular back in the eighties because we all thought meat 
you know, all these type of things were what drove us to become stronger, especially. And I still think a lot of us feel that way. Um, But in your case, do you think when it came to the animals, did you have a guilt as well? Did that depress you? Or was that something that you just, you know, I know you talk about that. You just didn't want to eat animals. I don't think guilt is, uh, yeah, I don't think guilt is the right word. Um, I, I say empathy. Um, most people have a pet, right? A dog or a cat. Yes. And they feel very connected to that animal. And when that animal is suffering, it hurts if you're connected to them. Well, when I got somebody to help me release me from my own suffering, I sat in meditation all night long and said, what can I do to contribute to less suffering in this world? Right. And um, the first thing that came to me was, We'll just stop harming animals. There's no need for it. So being a, you know, a background in physiology and science, I said, okay, uh, and, and look, my father was an English professor. My mom was a psychologist. So there were academics. And then I got all the questions, right? <laughs> you know, what about your nutrition? What about, the, can you do this? Can you? So I said, well, there's gotta be answers out there. Cause I know in my heart of hearts, this is right. I know it makes me feel better there's got to be scientific explanations for what I'm experiencing. So that's what I set out on a 25 to 30 year path. And I'm still every day reading the science. My wife kids me and she goes, don't stay up too late reading studies. They're like candy to me because they're such a gift. Once you know how to get the best out of this physical body, you just want to share that with people. It's just like, you know, it's a gift you want to pay forward. It's natural to, when you connect with other people and you see other people suffering with health. I watched my father die at 48. I watched my mom die at 60. I watched my brother die at 58. You see, wait a minute. I I wish they were here. I wish I still had them here. And they could have been had they made some simple changes. So that's, that's that's what I want. I don't want to see other people suffer and watching their loved ones I don't want to see dads out there, you know, suffering with obesity and diabetes and, and prostate surgery and, 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 and all these things that are completely not need to happen in your life if you do proper diet and exercise. And, you know, for, for anyone who's connected to family members, loved ones, or even the animals, it doesn't matter how big you expand your circle of empathy. We're all connected to people somewhere or another. Or, or, or other people other than ourselves, hopefully. If not, you're a psychopath. <laughs> I talk a lot about looking toward the future of your health, not just about now, but I think a lot of people only think in like six months or a year, or maybe even five year, the five year plan. They're not looking if you're 30 years old, what am I gonna feel like when I'm 70 or 80, right? I didn't either. I was a hardcore lifter, didn't give a shit. I think maybe you grew up in an era I did were lifting heavy weights, you know, being sore all the time, even getting injury uh, injuries was kind of a, you know, something that was very empowering. It gave us, you know, a lot of things are just so much different too, as far as knowing what we're doing now and having the advancements of nutrition, different types of workouts, what's damaging us, what isn't, you know, all these things I think growing up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we just didn't have, especially before technology. All you had were some magazines, some books, right? And my family has a uh, history, the men of heart disease. My father's had a few stints. My uh, uncle, who I look like the most, had, I think, two quadruple bypasses. My cousins, a lot of them dealt with a lot of heart issues. But what was interesting to me is I didn't care. I just had an obsession of getting huge. And I took something very healthy. And I think a lot of people do this. And I first started working out and I really got very strong, very ripped. But then before you know it, I want to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now I'm 250 pounds and I feel like shit, even though I'm pretty strong in the gym, I'm sweating profusively. You didn't seem to kind of go this route. You went very healthy early which is pretty amazing in itself. And I get the food part of it, but now you are even doing shows, which I never even heard bodybuilding shows, your age demographic that are vegan. You took the path very quickly to be healthy on many different levels. And I know you're, you know, you studied and everything. What made you be consistent with that? Like, how did you stick with 
you know, so many people become vegetarians, vegans, flip flop, quit. Same with training. You know, they'll work out for six months, quit for a year, go back for three years, quit for six months, get married, fall off a cliff, try to make a comeback, never do it. Right. I'm, how did you stay that consistent with everything? Yeah, so I, I see uh, within within the, the vegan movement, so to speak, or those those even adopting any different uh, style of diet, uh, whether it's keto or paleo or whatever, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Adopting a diet, if you are adopting it from the outside in, which is information that you buy into and try to adopt it to yourself, is a very different experience from you saying, hey, this is coming from inside of me. I want to live the best life. I want to be an example for other people. I want to inspire other people. Right. When I get in the gym, I work out for my wife. I want to be here for her. I want to support her all the way into my <laughs> triple digits, you know? Uh, because I love her and I care for her and that's what you do for people you love, you know, you are there for them. There is nothing more masculine than being a supporter and a provider for your, your spouse or, or, or whoever you love. So I think that's a powerful motivation and one that doesn't fade. It's not, I'm doing this because I'm healthy. It's I'm doing it because the health matters to the people that I care about. Yeah. When I saw my dad suffering, my mom suffering, my brother suffering, that hurt me. I don't want to see them suffer. Every time you are in an ill state of health, you, whether you like it or not, are hurting the people who care about you most. Mm. They don't want to see you sick. They don't want to see you hurting. They don't want to see you suffering. They don't. It hurts them if they care about you at all. So I think when you come from that place, it's a very different motivation than I want to look good or I want to look hot or I want to look great at work or I want to look good on the beach. That's very surface and that can be fleeting. And then, you know, the stress comes and then the, you know, the relatives come and then all of the things happen, the car accident, the house payments and all the stressors say, oh, let's just have a beer. Oh, let's just have a donut. Oh, let's just, now it all goes away. Right. Mm -hmm. It's because you, you're not centered or anchored in that experience of your why. So important. To be honest, I think if you don't have that foundation, your chance for success is about a chance of success of a restaurant fail, failing, which is like 90 something percent. You also don't realize too, if you're healthier, the influence you have on others right? Let's call it yes. for what it is. I mean, I, I have a massive family. I have hundreds of cousins and I took up weightlifting at such a young age or fitness. And so many of them at all different ages, even my young ones that are 18 now, or my friends' sons that are all really elite athletes, a lot of them, they watch me on YouTube or we talk about fitness and all these different things that I've learned, who I've studied, previous bodybuilders, power lifters, all those different types of things. And they kind of see somebody who kind of went through it. That's kind of was really in it, not just, I didn't do shows, but my life, a lot of it revolved around weightlifting and bodybuilding, I guess. But here's the other thing. I, I'm so different than you guys because I have an image consulting and I try to help men and women lose weight myself. The way I do it is very slowly. It's like one pound a week at most. But the one thing I kind of work with is portion control because I never wanted to be a nutritionist. I'm not obsessed with food. One of the reasons why is because I grew up in an Italian household and I'm not going to lie. I love all different types of foods and I was not willing to give them up. It was like my life. Maybe I'm just programmed that way. Still to this day, I probably go out to eat more than anyone I've ever known. My father owned a bar restaurant nightclub throughout his life. My mother worked in the uh, restaurant industry, was a very well-known chef in Chicago cooked for all the archdiocese and food still to this day, everybody always wants to go out to eat. And that's just part of my persona, I guess. But back to how I help people is just learning different times when to eat, uh, backing up portions, cutting back on a lot of things. It could be alcohol and getting to the gym more often being consistent with that as well. You, someone like yourself is at a different level. 
you not only are really deep into nutrition and then you kind of went into these like really creating supplements that you would think would be extremely beneficial and i'm anti-supplement i did supplements when i was younger which i'll get into after this but tell me first of all how does somebody you know i know a lot of people wouldn't want to create supplements it's not easy they don't understand all the hard work and all the different things you have to go through but you've had this a while this is a or like a passion that's beyond just you wanting to help people eat better, right? Tell us about, you know, the whole, your whole line, the whole. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So let's, let's supplements. I, I actually agree with you. I don't think there is a need for supplementation. So why do I have a supplement company? Right. <laughs> Um, okay, so the reason is because our moderns, the realities of our modern society, the realities of modern factory farming. For let's uh, back up just a second. What is a supplement? You know, when I ask people in my lectures, I, I tour all over the country and do lectures. When I ask people in my lectures what the most popular supplement is, and most people say multivitamin, vitamin C, whatever. It, they get they get floored when I say no. The number one most used supplement in the world is salt. It is a mineral supplement. We add it to our food, and the number two is sugar. Yeah, it's an isolated carbohydrate. Yeah. So salt and sugar, uh, and 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 then oil is an isolated fat. You know, when I, I hear people say, "Oh, I don't use protein powder because it's an isolated protein." And then they pick up a donut, which has isolated carbohydrates and isolated fats, but they won't do isolated proteins. Those mm -hmm. are all just three different macronutrients. And I'm like, okay, what's the difference? So uh, like I'm drinking a, a chai tea. That is a supplement, right? It is a tea bag. That's a herbal supplement. We're supplementing our diet. I'm not sitting down to a bag of chai and eating it. Right. That's food. That's the difference. We all the herbs and spices in your cabinet, they're all supplements. You're supplementing it. You're not using them for a major caloric source. So we're eating supplements all day long, every day, almost all of us, and we don't even realize it. Of course. So that's one thing. We just got to get beyond the stigma of what's a supplement. Most people think it's in a pill or powder form, and it's not. It can be in lots of different forms. Um, so the, the second part is, it's the nutrition. Are you getting, and be honest with yourself, are you getting that nutrition from the food that you're eating? If not, then you're hurting yourself. You're, you know, like vitamin D3, um, one of the more popular supplements right now because of COVID-19 and the relationship to vitamin D3 and COVID-19. I've done some great videos on that. But um, look, we are, we get naturally, we produce vitamin D3 naturally through sunlight exposure. So we actually don't even need it. Vitamin D3 is actually erroneously labeled. It's, it's a hormone. It's not a vitamin at all, actually. Um, it's a hormone created through endogenous processes when we're exposed to sunlight. But we've brought humanity indoors. So we're not exposed to the sunlight. And we live in cold climates because we have heaters now <laughs> and housing that keeps us warm. Those cold climates, anything in a northern environment doesn't get sunlight. You can get direct sunlight in the north during the winter months and get zero vitamin D3 activation. And if you wonder why flu and viruses happen larger in the month because our vitamin D levels tank during the winter because of this. Mm. So taking supplemental vitamin D3 can get us back into the normal range, prevent you know possible death <laughs> from infections to uh, influenza or, or other viruses. So we now know this. It's a known fact. Vitamin D3 goes into the body, upregulates part of our immune system, uh, an immunoglobulin called cathelicidin. Cathelicidin attacks and destroys the viruses, mm. all of them. That is how we kill viruses in our body, and it starts with vitamin D3. 90% of Americans are too low in vitamin D3. And then we wonder why people are dying at such high rates of something that 99% of the people should survive. <laughs> you know? 
It's because proper, improper immunonutrition. There's a whole category of science, immunonutrition. You can look it up, Google it. Okay. But vitamin C, vitamin uh, zinc, uh, vitamin D3, all vitally important for a healthy immune system. Sure. So I think there's a place for supplementation when it's not in ours. Now, one of the other reasons for supplementation is, let's say, ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is an amazing adaptogenic herb. Adaptogens help regulate the body. So if you're too stressed, it'll actually calm you down. If you're too low in energy, it'll actually increase your energy, which is really cool because most drugs are unidirectional. They either do one thing, they suppress, or they accelerate something, whereas adaptogens regulate. Well, how many adaptogens are you eating in your daily meals? Mm -hmm. Zero. Well, if this can help your body cope with the stresses that you're going through, the driving stress, the relationship stress, the work stress, the working out stress, as, as good as stressed as that feels, it's still stress. We need to regulate this. Our cortisol levels are through the roof. People are having trouble sleeping because that cortisol is just keeping our mind buzzing. You know, we're seeing these problems of modern society, but we're not using plants, the original medicine, to help us adapt and cope with these stressors when they're right there at our fingertips. So to just say, no, that's a supplement, it's in a pill form, I'm not gonna consume that plant when it can be helpful to us, that's kind of silly in my aspect. Why wouldn't you use something that can help you in your life if it's not consumable in the food supply? Yeah, my I started to take supplements in my later teens. And honestly, I got some really good results. But this is again back in the mid 80s or late 80s where mm -hmm. it was kind of Genesis gainers, uh, Genesis weight gainers or Twin Lab gainers fuel, maybe taking some animal packs, right? Those type of things. And it did, I saw some results when I was younger. I, it was a weird thing. I gained like 80 pounds when I was like 19 and I grew four inches and my friends swear to God, it was because of the supplements I was taking, which was, but I didn't feel good on supplements. I actually even started to spit up blood. I don't know what I was. I don't know if I was overload. I don't know what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of getting on steroids, like a lot of guys back then. And I'm like, you know what, let mm -hmm. me just see how far I can take this. Cause I went from like 135 pounds. Then all of a sudden I'm 180. Then I'm like 220. And it all happened very quickly. And I, I always loved Flintstone vitamins, but I said, I don't want any of this. I just want to eat steak, eat fish, eat as many vegetables as I can. I actually even wanted a steak a day. But I got off supplements and I started to get the same type of gains. A lot of my results came from how hardcore, the, the, my workouts became more intense because I started to really follow like... Uh, I would say Dorian Yates, Lee Haney's type of workouts, even Rich Kaspari, maybe even going to the gym twice a day and consuming four or 5,000 calories a day. So I was really caught up in that with no supplements. And then I didn't do supplements until like my 30s. I would just throw some creatine when I got a smoothie. But for the most part, I'd never been a supplement guy. But here's the deal. I think a lot of people I don't know if it's a placebo effect. I don't know what it is, but it really works for a lot of people within the gym or being consistent or getting results for them. Because I always say you got to find what works best for you and find the right supplements that work best for you, the right type of foods that work for the right workout. So I think that's yes. what a, a lot of people either follow what someone else says or they just walk in GNC or vitamin shop or a 24 hour fitness and say, what do you think? Oh, I want to gain weight or I want to get more ripped or I mean, whatever the case may be, I want more energy. You got to experiment, I believe, and just see what works best for you. Now, let me get back to your, I, I see your supplements behind you. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, you, how would I say this? How would you set somebody up? I come to you right now and I'm like, Hey, I'm the average Joe. I just want to get in better shape. I want to have more energy at work and when I work out. I also, I'm, I'm gaining weight in my stomach a lot of times. Kind of what would you start them off with? So, you know, our audience has an idea. Yeah, so uh, I actually don't even start on the nutritional side. I, I start with where they're at, um, what are the stressors in their life, and um, what are their goals. Once I know that, then I can, you know, help them get something that's actually going to accomplish that. What you don't want to do is 
people have this over-reliance on supplements as a fix, and that's the wrong approach to, to, to if you're going to do that, don't do supplements at all. <laughs> I'll just tell you that right now. What supplements can do is supplement a good diet and exercise program. They can improve it. They can help you get better results and sooner. So, you know, I wanted to help people get results sooner and get them that would make them last. So Clean Machine for me is about 50% education and 50% actual products. It's, I, I, I don't create products to sell. I create products, let, let's take uh, the protein I make. This is called Clean Green Protein. I was the very first company in the world to utilize a plant called duckweed. Duckweed is the most nutrient dense plant in the world. Higher in nutrition than kale, spinach, spirulina, any other plant. Higher in essential amino acids and branch chains than even soy. So when I found this, it, we actually discovered that it actually has bioactive B12. The first plant discovered with actual B12 inside of the plant. So nutritionally off the charts, uh, super high in omegas, high in fiber, high in chlorophyll, high in lutein, just incredible. Actually, this is the next year award. That's the Oscars of supplements. So we were chosen as the best supplement out of over 3,000 supplements looked at the year. So in 2018, that's what I look for. I look, nobody was willing to bring that. All of the top supplement companies out there took a look at this and said, it's too green. It's, uh, you know, won't be popular enough. It'll take too much education. Nobody knows about it. So they weren't interested in it because they're only concerned with profits. I'm looking out there to see what is the absolute best that nature has to offer and bring it to market because none of the rest of the profit driven companies will do that and yeah. give it to the people, at least make it available to people so that they have a choice between all the cheap crap out there loaded with heavy metals by people just trying to make profits off of them, making the cheapest products so that they can make the most profits and spending a whole lot of marketing money out there trying to convince you to buy their crap. Right. You know, that's the wrong way. I think the honest way is to actually go with and, and offer something that is the absolute best in nature. Our ahi flower, uh, it's the richest source of plant-based omega-3 in the world. It's hands down above everything else. There's nothing like it. I was the first to bring that market and we won the next award again for that one. And, and again, my sales are nowhere near what other companies are and I don't care. I want to do something that is helpful to people, not just profitable. You know, and that's really the difference between a profit-driven company or a marketing-based company. They yeah. do the cheapest products they can do, load it with stimulants to make you think it's working, make you think it's nice and strong building. It's just stimulants. Stop with that nonsense. You know, we put a very little amount of stimulants in ours, and, and it's from organic, actually, green coffee in our pre-workout. But all four of the ingredients are backed by published human studies. This is way more expensive. Our product costs about 10 times of what most of those pre-workouts on there. And I do that because I don't, I'm not making much profit. I want people results so they get excited about what they're doing. They see the results, they feel the results, they experience it. Then they get to inspire other people and that just pays its way forward. For me, the awards tell me we have 13 national and international awards for our products out of, <laughs> out of six products. So, you know, that, that tells me that our peers see what we're doing and really appreciate it. But more importantly, the customers that we get, they're getting the best nutrition. They're getting products that they can't get anywhere else because those companies are too focused on profits and won't ever sell the products that I bring to market. <laughs> No, I get it. And I've always, at least I even learned even back then, it's like a trend too. It becomes very trendy, a lot of things, as you know. And I don't, I'll be very honest with you. For the most part, I don't trust a lot of things I put in my body. I trust food, but I'm just saying when it comes to supplements, because like I said earlier, I wasn't feeling good on certain ones. And then the reaction yes. I started to have, 
And I think the difference between me is I had the confidence to say, listen, if I stop this, I don't feel like I'm going to lose all this weight or I'm going to feel like I can't get the results. Right. Same with guys on steroids or supplements or whatever. There's an, some people also like, if I get on this, I can never get off this. Or if I only get on this, I can only stay on this because they start to see results. Then they can't afford it anymore. I do a lot of videos on that. Don't let, you know, your supplements make you go broke. Don't let your gym make you go broke. All these, cause you gotta become, you gotta go with what you can afford. Um, but where can people like, so you mainly sell your products. Is it online? Can they go to GNC 24 or where can they get your supplements? Yeah, so I, I, I did something that most people would say if you're owning a company is, is, is suicide, but um, we were in um, Vitamin Shop, we were in GNC, we were in Sprouts, uh, all the big retailers, and I did, made a decision to pull out um, and sell directly to consumers through our website and on Amazon. What that allowed us to do, because when you sell to a retailer, uh, they take 50 to 60%, sometimes even more of the profits. That means it forces companies to make the profits really cheap, to cheaper and cheaper ingredients. So the retail model has actually encouraged manufacturers to make crappier and crappier products so that they can give all their profits over to the retailers who are taking all the profits just by reselling them. And I said, okay, but but my products are really expensive. My ingredients are really expensive because they're best in class, the best in hormone optimization by 18 times. And this is published studies. I'm not doing marketing hype because I'm sick oh, of that. I worked for many of the top companies in the industry and I hated all the marketing lies they told, which is why I'm doing things differently. And, you know, our, because our, our, I, I go for the best in quality, uh, we have to we have to charge a little bit more, but I because I pulled out of retail and stopped giving all my profits to the big retailers. I now can I've lowered our price twice. Everybody else is raising their prices. I've lowered our price twice because I want to make the best nutrition more affordable to more people. That's my goal in life, and if I can do that, I've succeeded. I think a lot of people when they hear someone talk about your like what you're doing, they want to know where do you create this, right? Yes. Let's, right. Let's call it for what it is. Are you doing this in your garage? Do you have another company doing it? Is it <laughs> out of the country? Where are you getting all your ingredients? Who's in charge of everything as far as kind of behind the scenes? Yeah. So like with our protein, uh, we only use proteins grown here in North America. Uh, our, our lentine, the duckweed is, is grown right here in the state of Florida. So it's local. Um, and then we give it to a, a certified GMP a manufacturer who has uh, under FDA regulation. So um, then uh, we have it third party tested for both heavy metals, micros and product ID to make sure that what we have in the product is actually in there. <laughs> and all of those are all documented and we're third party certified. Every single ingredient that we use is non-GMO, is gluten free, it is third party certified vegan and natural. And I don't make compromises on any of that because that's what I want for me. That's what I want for my family. Um, and that's what I want to give to people. And I, I'm, I'm this weird kind of guy that believes that if you do the right thing, that will make you popular and grow. Not if you do the most profitable thing, because the most profitable thing is usually not the right thing. Um, you know, so I'm trying a different path and I believe that there are people out there who feel like me that are looking for high integrity brands that are doing the right thing, even though it's more expensive because it's the right thing to do um, because it's something that they believe in and want for themselves. Are your supplements something as far as like a vitamin that you take every day or do you have things to lose weight, gain weight? Do you have things for energy? Is it kind of set up that way or do you, are you mainly focusing on just specific, a few things? No, that's a, that's a good question. Most product manufacturers will say, okay, I want to build a weight loss product. And then they'll go see what's available and then put together a product through formulation. I do it the opposite. 
I wait till an amazing research backed ingredient comes to market. And I say, okay, is that a good fit for my goals and what I'm trying to accomplish? Because I look at the whole physiological process from the enzymes that uh, help break down to the microbiome. Does it help promote microbiome absorption and bioavailability? Inflammation, does it bring down inflammation? So I'm looking at the whole physiological experience. So I, I wrote a book on heat shock proteins and most people don't know what those are. So there's three types of proteins. Uh, the, the proteins we consume, nutritional proteins, um, proteins that actually make up the structures of our body. And then there's what, what's called functional proteins. These are little balls of proteins that actually do work inside of our body. They're not structural, not like the building blocks of the house, and they're not nutritional, the, the stuff that we eat and break down and rebuild with. This functional proteins, there's one called heat shock protein. So heat shock proteins cause the adaptation in our cells. When you work out, you stress that muscle, right? You stress it, and then the body has to adapt to that stress. Well, adaptogens, when I was first looking at adaptogens like ashwagandha, um, the, you know, I was saying, well, how do adaptogens upregulate or downregulate at the same time? Everything we take, every drug you take regulates up or regulates down one direction. How is this doing both? Well, it isn't. The herb itself is actually upregulating a system in our body called heat shock proteins inside cells. And then those heat shock proteins adapt the stress. So when you stress the muscle with weight, it says, okay, I can do three things. One, I can strengthen the cell, right? Make the cell thicker and stronger, more dense with protein so that it can handle that stress that way. Or I can recruit more cells, hyperplasia, right? Bring more cells to the game. Or I can replace those cells, which is apoptize or break down those muscle and replace them with better built cells altogether. Heat shock proteins do all three of those things. Now, most people focus on the steroids, right? Which actually send the signal to the cell, build me some muscle. Mm -hmm. Or the protein, which are the building blocks but they're not focused on the workers that are actually doing the work of the adaptation inside the cell. And I'm like, you're missing half of the equation. If you're focusing on protein, which is building blocks, and, and uh, 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 hormones like testosterone, which is the foreman giving the direction, you're not focusing on the workers that are actually building the damn house. <laughs> I'm like, why not? So that's been my focus is getting these adaptogens into products like cell block 80 for hormone support to regulate that whole process and upregulate your body's other 50% of muscle building process that people don't talk about. People, why? Because it's not sexy. It's deep science. And for me to try to explain that to people is, is a bit challenging. But it's the right thing to do, you know? People say, oh, just put out a testosterone product. You'll sell millions of it. And I'm like, no, but that's not the proper way. When you send testosterone out of balance, it actually can be detrimental to your health, detrimental to your body, cause prostate cancer. You know, we, we don't want these things. So when I found an herb that actually was so adaptive it, it uh, increased testosterone, blocked its conversion to DHT, blocked its conversion to estrogen, and allowed more of it to bind at the receptor sites. Now you've, what you've done, instead of uh, super physiologically increasing your testosterone and having it cause a whole bunch of negative side effects, you've just modulated each one of the different positions in there, and you've made your testosterone more efficient. The same amount of testosterone acting more efficiently and effectively without causing any of those side effects. That's the proper way to do it. But people said, oh, that's too much information. You can't put that on a soundbite advertising. Okay. It was the very first product I created in 1913, and the sales are still growing today. <laughs> what year did you create that product? I'm sorry, um, 2013. 2013? Yeah, 1913 would be a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure they knew. Yeah. <laughs> You know, do you find your target audience, is it bodybuilders more or less? Is it CrossFit crowd or is it yoga, Pilates, or is it everybody? What's, who seems to be gravitating towards your supplements the most? 
Okay, so the people who gravitate towards our supplements are just about from any walk of life, any age group, any, uh, any different uh, demographic, but they all have one thing in common, that I want health and fitness, not one or the other. I don't want fitness at the expense of my health. And I don't want to give, you know, I don't want just health and not have you know, better results in the gym. If I'm gonna spend an hour a day working out, I don't want, I see so often guys getting into the gym, doing the exact same workout, you know, the three sets of 10, doing the same weights, and they look exactly the same all year long. <laughs> and I'm like, that would be frustrating as hell to me, you know? And, and here I am at 59, I'm in better shape than most of the guys half my age. And they're coming up to me and asking me, how do you, how do you get like that? <laughs> 17 inch guns on a 37 year vegan who's 59, I'm going into my 60th year of life. Right. It's the nutrition. It's the nutrition. <laughs> You've got to combine the exercise and the nutrition. They work really well together, but you can get so much more benefits. So for me, you know, a lot of people say, oh, plant-based, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make any change. I'm saying just include more of the nutrition into your life and you'll get better results out of your life. Don't you want better results? Right. It's not. Let's get beyond the stigma and the dogma of being this camp or that camp. That doesn't matter to me. I want the best for your health. You know, I want the best for your fitness because you you want to enjoy life just like I do. And I want to give that forward to other people. If I can help improve your life, why wouldn't I want to do that? You know, that's the right thing to do. Yeah, and you want their quality of life as they age get better, not worse, where a lot of people actually think I have to pamper myself or I can't work out harder or I can't do a lot of things when actually it's quite the opposite. There's no question when you're 60, 70, or 80, you're not going to probably be as strong as when you were 20, 30, 40. But the truth is you can be in incredible shape and you may even end up in better shape than then. Right. I'm just saying you may not have as much muscle mass, but you could definitely maybe have a better, uh, better breathing, for instance, maybe resting better. There's a lot of things that you could benefit as you're aging because you're always yes. learning. Yes. Well, let's get into your workouts here. Let me throw that yes. in there because you're, uh, like I said, that was pretty crazy that I heard you were involved with. I never heard of these vegan or these vegetarian type bodybuilding shows, but you mm -hmm. seem to be kind of like myself at this point in our life because it's not like all of a sudden, which I could probably still do. I don't want to be 250 again, right? I don't need to be a 54 inch coat or a, have 20 inch arms or all these things. Um, I'm kind of about maintaining what I have and also looking forward to. Yes not injuring myself, but hopefully when I'm older, because let's face it, you do get to the point where what is my life quality going to be when I'm 70, 80? I've been lifting weights my entire life. What am I doing to my tendons, my joints? So it's really about right. earlier, not getting injuries, hopefully having strength as I get older and having flexibility and all these things. Uh, you're probably very similar. I presume you don't want to get much bigger. You know, we kind of. No, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So I think a lot of people too don't realize like how to get somewhere and then how to maintain that. A lot of people kind of have these ups and downs. What do you kind of do to maintain your workouts? Are you mainly a gym rat or do you do other things outside of the gym? What is your. So anybody who's ever gotten into the physiology of the human body, um, it adapts for one major goal, survival, right? And in and, and survival, it uses the least amount of calories, right? And is efficient with those calories and, and, and macronutrients. So our body has this tremendous storing and recycling mechanism. Um, you know, I hear people, where to get your protein? And the first thing that I say is the same place that you do. Uh, since all essential amino acids on this planet are made by plants, mm. animals cannot make essential amino acids. It's impossible. They're made by photosynthesis. Right. And no human I know can photosynthesize like so. <laughs> we can't. All humans, all animals cannot make essential amino acids. So whether you eat an animal or a plant, you're still getting the exact same essential amino acids made by plants. 
So what we're doing is feeding the grass to a cow, then eating the cow. All of that protein in that cow came from the grass. Okay. It is made by the plants. All of the essential fatty acids. Most people say, oh, fish oils, where you get your omega-3s. No, fish do not make omega-3. They make zero omega-3. They get it from eating algae or eating other fish that ate algae. But it all originates in plants. The two essential fatty acids are ALA and LA. They're not EPA or DHA. They're not even essential. <laughs> and most people don't know this. And that's why they are you know, coaxed into marketing ploys to get them to buy products that they actually don't really need. Um, so, you know, you don't need to eat animal. There is zero nutritional need to eat any animal product whatsoever. None. There is no requirement. There is a requirement, though, to get our essential amino acids, at least from plants, all our vitamins, plants, uh, all, our, uh, all the fiber, plants, all the carbohydrates, plants. All of these nutrients are only made by plants. Some bacteria, actually, I take that back. Some bacteria can do it, but I don't see people uh, sitting down to a bowl of bacteria for breakfast in the morning. <laughs> what type of workouts are you doing then? Are you, like I said, are you in the gym? So I do what's called... Uh, what? Yeah, so I do what's called uh, adaptive training. Okay. So uh, adaptive training, I change up my workouts every two weeks, uh, two to four weeks. Um, so I will do super slows for two weeks, which is taking that weight and very slow up and very slow down. Then I will do three second holds. So I'll do my standard weight and hold it at the contraction position for three seconds. You're really squeezing that. Sure. There's a, an omega-3 called uh, LA, which converts to arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6, stores in the muscle tissue. And when you contract the muscle, it squeezes out arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory. That's where you get a little bit swole. It brings water and nutrients over, but it also signals to the cell, hey, come, let's build this cell. Let's repair this cell. It is a cell signaling agent. So you want a little bit out of pro-inflammation. So what you're doing is keep changing the workout. So I do uh, max contract or three second holds. And then I'll do super slows. Then I'll do uh, light weights, high reps. I'll do five by 20, right? Which is five sets of 20 reps. So that's a hundred reps per exercise. And I'll do five to you know eight exercises. So I can do 800 reps in a training session. Um, so then I'll do a little bit of heavy, but I'll only do heavy up to a point and really focus on the motion. And so most people will do heavy and then drop the weights right back and do none of the concentric, uh, only the eccentric motion. And you can burn more calories doing concentric exercises than you will ever doing eccentric exercises. So most people are like, you know, they do the curl and then they just let the weight drop. Instead of lowering and slowing that at a, a decent pace, when you focus on the form, that's when you can get results that other people aren't getting in the gym. Yeah, I'm all about experimenting, especially as we age. Because, But I will say, you know, throughout years, I've done certain type of workouts that were very strict, uh, mainly in a gym. It could be other bodybuilders' workouts, powerlifters' workouts that worked as well. But what worked for me as I went on was experimenting with many different types of equipment, doing it many different ways. I love going to many different types of gyms as well. I don't care if it's a regular hardcore powerlifting gym. I don't care if it's an LA Fitness 24 hour or anytime or whatever it is. And then you can throw me in anywhere basically and I'll try to get a good workout. And I love that because I, I, I love a new scenery, new people, new energy. Um, and, and adaptive training allows the body to keep adapting because your body will reach plateaus. If you keep doing the same thing, the body will adapt to that point and stop adapting. If you keep changing it, if you change the position of the, the workout, go from side or go to the outside, if you use cables and then use barbells and then use dumbbells and use machines. All these are different ways of stressing the muscle. And if you keep changing it, the body has to keep adapting to what you're doing. So you're keeping your body in a regularly adaptive state and you'll get so much better results out of it. But you'll also, by not focusing always on um, 
increasing the weight in order to keep getting adaptive. You don't need to do that. You can shift the weight around and work it in different ways to keep the, in, without having to keep increasing weight, which is wear and tear on joints, like you said, which is a no bueno, <laughs> especially when you get into the 50s. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have to understand weightlifting may not be for them. I'm just saying. Then they try cross right. for them. They did go to yoga. That's not for me. I'll try Pilates. I'm not down with that either. Yes. Um, I try to tell people, you got to find what you love, right? A lot of times, you also got to take a realistic approach. If you want to be jacked, you're most likely going to have to do something to build that muscle mass, right? It's not like saying, I want to be huge and jacked and I'm going to swim mainly. You're going to get a beautiful body, but you're not going to look like somebody who's you know, a bodybuilder, hypothetically. But I also believe, <clears throat> excuse me, when it just comes to working out in general, you know, it's what you do outside that gym. And it's not just food, right? It's other type of exercises that may be incorporated. I don't care if it's walking. Again, you yeah. may hit the gym for four days a week. You hit it for an hour and a half or whatever. That's wonderful. What are you doing on the weekends? Are you surfing? Are you playing tennis, racquetball? Do you go to a theme park and walk extra steps? All that means a lot over a long period of time. And a lot of people kind of hit the gym, I think, in this day and age, hit the gym, try to be consistent, and then they're sitting in their office or sitting on their ass for the other 10, 12 hours watching TV, all these other things. <laughs> but what I try to incorporate is saying, listen, guys, you know, let's do more. I don't, even after dinner, let's go for a walk with your girlfriend, wife, boyfriend, girl. I don't know who it is. Or again, just finding other things, maybe playing racquetball. Or maybe your buddy goes to yoga you know, once a month you go do that with them. I'm just saying, you know, just experimenting again. It could be anything, rock climbing or whatever the hell, you know, indoors, hiking, you go on a vacation. Don't just sit on the beach and get smashed for seven, eight days. You know, even if you, you know, you go on a cruise, you see people, they work out for 45 minutes an hour, and then they drink for the other 10 hours. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of stuff you could be doing, you know what I mean? That is healthy. It doesn't have to also be over the top. I think people too go, I work out, so I'm in the gym X amount of time. I get it. You know, I'm 100% down with you, but that doesn't mean the rest of the day you can just not do anything else or not do much. That's my theory, what I try to teach a lot. So I, um, I totally agree. You got to enjoy what you're doing or you won't stay with it. If you feel like workouts are work, if the emphasis on work, then uh, I love working out. I, I really enjoy it. I look forward to it. And when I don't, I can feel the difference. Um, just, just like when I take nutrition that really works for me. Look, I, I don't believe it. I, I'm not pro supplement across the board. I think there's some supplements that people should not be taking. Sure. Um, I think there are supplements that are a complete waste of money. I think there are supplements that can actually be harmful to you. And I think there are low integrity companies out there just doing it for profits. and don't care about your health or your results. They care about their money. So, you know, like with everything and everyone, you got to adjust, assess it as well as you can to say, does this align with me and what I'm doing and what my goals are? And if it is, then you'll feel more comfortable to stay with it. And I, my three tenets are um, consistency. Exercise works the best and will give you the best results the more consistent you are. Intensity, whatever it is, whether it's working out with weights, or Pilates or whatever, the more you put into something, the more you're gonna get out of it. And that goes through all of life, <laughs> whether, you're, whether you're using your mind or your physical body or even your emotional self. If you put more of your emotional self in a relationship, you're gonna get more out of that relationship. So consistency, intensity, and then nutrient density. So a great study just came out recently. Um, university professor showed uh, that about 50% uh, of the nutrition has been lost from our modern foods. So even the healthy foods that we think we're eating aren't as healthy as they were just 50 years ago. Um, and because of all the processing, because of all the chemicals, because of all the additional stressors, uh, that we're exposed to and toxins that we're exposed to, getting highest amounts of nutrient density is very important to try to super compensate for the lack of nutrition that is, is in our foods and for our poor diets in general. I mean, with 60% of our population being obese, 
it's, it's a clear issue. <laughs> um, and look, it's not just the foods that we're eating, it's how they're processed, how they're manipulated that has been causing the problem. We think of these more healthy foods as healthier, but when they're so far away from what they naturally were, the mm -hmm. assumption is incorrect. And don't be the penalty, you know? If the nutrition is not there in the food, put it back. Choose supplementation or choose healthier foods, more organic, more locally grown, you know, ancient grains, original grains, not manipulated, not GMO, not, not you know, raised to uh, and just look good and taste good on the outside, but really for their nutritional value. Look at superfoods. Foods like dark greens, uh, co high colored fruits, they have these polyphenols and phytonutrients in them that give us so many different health benefits. Yes. I mean, just we just recently found out that polyphenols, which are found only in plants, they're the pigments that give our colors purple and yellow and green and blue and all the different colors of the rainbow. Those polyphenols get eaten by our bacteria. Those bacteria then poop out on metabolites that then promote our health, stimulate our immune system, increase our nutritional uptakes, act, bioactivate our vitamin D3. There was that study that people were taking vitamin D3 and still not getting bioactive results, but they looked in their gut. And those people, there was gut bacteria that feed on fiber, right? Uh, they know that because they poop out butyrates, short chain fatty acids. But the fiber that converted that uh, D3 into bioactive D3, the kind that our body actually utilizes, was because they weren't consuming enough fiber in their diet. And fiber only comes from plants. So again, all this keeps going back to just consume more plants and you're going to get healthier results. Uh, the, the antioxidants, the polyphenols, the phytonutrients, the fiber, the prebiotic fibers, the oligosaccharides, all of these only come from plants, only found in plants. And the more you can eat, it's not an all or nothing equation. The more you can incorporate these foods into your diet, the better results you're going to get in the gym, the better health you're going to have, and the longer you can enjoy life and enjoy life with the ones you love. It's that simple. Yeah, and I think people have to kind of reach out too if they want to learn about this and talk to different types of people, not just one person. Same with fitness. A lot of times you may only have one workout partner or just go to one gym mm -hmm. or maybe go to one type of store that has, it could be Whole Foods or whoever it is. Um, mm -hmm. I think people are afraid and they're afraid to kind of learn mm -hmm. certain things when it comes to health and wellness because they're afraid they're going to get exposed. And the more they learn about maybe eating better or different type of workouts, the more they're going to see that maybe they were do they're doing things incorrectly. And then they're almost, I don't want to say they're ashamed, but they're embarrassed, right, to a certain degree. And I think what people have to understand is you don't have to be obsessed with what you're doing, even taking supplements or eating right. Mm -hmm. You're going to have ups and downs. I talk about it all the time. But I yes. think when people think they look at someone like you and they're like, holy shit, that dude, I can never you know, do what he does. Well, you don't have to do what he does, but you no. just want to maybe take just, I, I talk about it all the time, start off small. Also make it social. You know, you could do yes. one of two things <clears throat> with working out or, you know, wanting to eat better and everything, get around people that are doing it. Have fun. Yeah. I don't care if you go to farmer's markets. I don't care if you go to bodybuilding shows, all these things, do it social, just learn about it and have some fun. That does not mean you have to go hardcore. Also, if you're more introverted, that's cool too. Just go at it solo. You don't have to talk to anybody about the, you know, the health and wellness that you are kind of doing. I think a lot of people think, oh my God, I'm introverted. I don't want to work out at a gym. I'm scared. Or I don't want to get caught up with, you know, uh, going certain places. I got to talk. I'm embarrassed. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's mm -hmm. over my head. You know, all these things just start small. My God, I, I say it all the time, regardless. I don't care if you go to a gym at the beginning one or two times a day, or if you even start eating better, Let's just start with one meal. You know, let's just start with one a week. Before you know it, right. you start to maybe feel twice a week, three days a week, maybe just once a day having a great breakfast and then kind of proceeding from there. Because once they start to see results, but most people go extreme, they go on extreme diets, want to lose all this weight or get a huge, mm -hmm. and they're very inconsistent. They don't get the results in the quick amount of time as they think, and it kind of all falls apart. That's my two cents with it. 
I, I, I totally agree with you. And, and you know, I, uh, I went on kind of a spirit quest when uh, once I had my breakthrough. I quit my job. I had some savings. I traveled to 48 countries all over the world. Right. And I just wanted to learn from other people and other cultures. What are you doing that seems right? You know? Because every culture I went into seemed like, wow, we don't do that. And that's a lot better than what we're doing. And you're getting better results. So I wanted to learn. And I worked with uh, Buddhist monks and uh, did chanting. I did uh, Native American sweat lodges. And when I was doing a sweat lodge, I had a really profound experience. Chief Native American chief up in the mountains of Maine. And... Uh, and I had the bursting out of sweat, right? Because you pour the water on the rocks and it's steam room times a hundred. <laughs> and just the bursting out with sweat released a whole bunch of sweat and just this overwhelming experience, physical experience of release yep. got emotions to start releasing. And then I started thinking about my father and his death and the tears started flowing. And then all the thoughts like, oh my God, how have I repeated his actions in my life? And it just all became visible. All of this just releasing and pouring out. So doing something like that was, which was intense. I realized, okay, you can take one aspect of the self, the physical, and move it from sweat or heat, right? And the emotional and psychological will want to move with it because we're a whole human being. And I said, well, how can I do that? If I can get people to take, you know, just like uh, use really nutrient dense foods for the first meal, throw some berries, make a great tasting smoothie, but you have all your dark greens, all your fiber, all your nutrition, you know, loaded, maxed out nutrition, you're going to feel that. And that's going to shift your nutrition a bit. And then your mental self will say, wait, that feels so good. And that's going to send a biofeedback. Hey, what else can I do to make my life better? And the emotional stuff will come. Even the spiritual stuff, if that's where you're at, will come. Or energetic stuff will come. And that's what I wanted to do. So I said, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to be totally transparent. I'm on a, <laughs> I'm like a, on a, a spy mission, right? to try to move people through to a better place through exercise and nutrition. Because when you do that, you can create an internal shift yes. that can last for a whole lifetime. And that's, that's the way I've tried to give back to people. Yeah, what I think I want yeah, to- For me, it all comes from being thankful for somebody helping me. I'm just trying to pay it forward. <laughs> Yeah, that's wonderful. I think we all have that where people have touched us throughout our life, especially when it comes to health and wellness. We've been influenced by others. Me, it yes. could be my cousins and then people I met throughout my life in the gym or out of the gym, right? Or it could be people, mm -hmm. famous bodybuilders again, or athletes that you wanted to emulate to a certain degree. And what I think you kind of do and that I kind of do that's very similar is I want people to go on their own journey. I want to create a blueprint that works mm -hmm. specifically for them though. Too many people get yes. caught up thinking they're going to follow others and get the same results, which very seldom happens right. because I don't care if I do the same workout as whoever. When I leave there, I have an entirely different life than that person. I have a different job than that person. I have different sleeping patterns, different eating habits. All of these things are different. And really, yes. the truth is I have to find what works specifically again for me to get the results that I desire. If I don't create my journey, you know, a lot of people think, oh, if I start getting healthier, oh, I'm going to have to meditate. That's boring. But you don't have to meditate. Unless you, want to. you want to work, you know, you want to get in better shape. I'm just saying you don't even have to lift weights. You know, you right. want to lose weight, right. not have to go to a gym. You don't even have to go to on a diet necessarily. Maybe no. just eating better. Again, maybe yeah. like a lot of people I talk about when it comes to working out, they'll be like, I can only work out in the morning, which is great. I'm like, well, did you ever try working out in the evening? No, because I got to get up at five and six, but I am tired throughout the day. I'm like, why don't you switch it around? Yeah. Why don't you sleep in a little later? It sounds like you need more sleep. And then instead of panicking, but after work too, going to work out, you'll burn off or after dinner, maybe just try it. Maybe once or twice, because now you're going to burn off a lot of calories. You may also not be in a rush where in the morning, a lot of times you may be getting there. You only have 45 minutes. You may have a call, your workouts, your, your mind's not on it. Or if you go work out in the evening when you don't have to rush home, you're, it's, you have a clear mind going in there. You may again make it social 
It may be busier. You may be learning a lot more where you go in the morning. There's not a lot of people there. So my point, I'm just using that for an example. But there could be so many things you can be doing. And again, back to experimenting. But you, if you're not willing to experiment and also create what yeah. works for you and do not depend on anybody else for your fitness. I think that's where a lot of people are at. Work out partner, right? I'm just saying, if they quit, you quit. You get married, your husband, wife, boyfriend, girl, whatever. They don't want to work out. Now you quit. Or insecurities. You want to stay in better shape. They don't. They're jealous. Whatever. The, there's all these things. You have to understand if you don't have your health, you have nothing. So I think, and you depend only on yourself is what I always talk yeah. about. So I don't care if you have a trainer, God bless if they want to help you and you can afford one. But what happens when you can't afford your trainer? What happens when you, you don't enjoy working out with them? Say you lift weights and you decide I want to go somewhere else and do something entirely different. Do it. Just go where your energy leads you. I always talk about with health and wellness because it's going to change. If you want it to be a lifetime program, like something you're going to do for the rest of your life, most likely, maybe me and you will lift weights throughout our entire life, but we're probably one out of thousands, right? We're going to, a lot of people will go to this gym or switch it up or just change, which is wonderful. Gravitate towards it. Don't quit. It is. So. It is. I agree. And look, I'm in the, I'm in the science field. And, and since the early 80s, when, when I started studying in college, uh, I, I actually uh, almost got booted from college um, because I was looking at the research as it was coming out. So I was reading the studies right out, out of the presses. And these textbooks were printed, you know, three to five years ago because they had to gather the information, put it into a text, and then print them, and then get them to the schools. And by the time we got them, it was outdated information. Yep. That's how fast science, the scientific community comes. So I would, you know, my teachers, my professors would say, okay, you know, here's the test. And I would write down the latest information. And they would say, no, that's wrong. Here it is in the text. And I said, that text is wrong. Here's the latest data. And they said, no, you're not going by what we're teaching you have to learn what we're teaching. And I'm like, no, I want to learn what's actual, what's the best information that's out there. So in, in that, I love being wrong because science is always being proven wrong. <laughs> it's right today, it's the best we have right now, but tomorrow we're gonna find something better and that's gonna replace it. And I, I'm banking on that. Mm -hmm. So when anybody says, oh, Jeff, I heard you say this, and that's wrong. Here's the new data. I'm like, thank you. That's awesome. Now I have better data to share with people. I'll go ahead and make the correction. I don't, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to put my ego in this game and put up the dukes and say, no, I'm going to defend this information that's wrong. No, hell no. I want the best new information. That's why I'm going out there finding these incredible plants that are far and above everything that we've got in there. Richest source of plant-based nutrition, only source of B12 in the plant, um, you know, highest source of omega-3 of any plant in the entire plant kingdom world. And be the first to bring it out there. Be the one to actually educate people. Take the time to show them why this is so much better, why it can benefit them. Here's the research. Here's the science saying it is. You don't have to trust me. You don't have to believe me. Read the science. And if it resonates with you, well, then you have a better option. I just want to be the vehicle to at least give consumers the choice right. to have access to these plants when other brands won't do it. That's what I'm doing. So for me, I spend most of my time educating. Mm -hmm. and, and when I find a, a plant or a stuff, like the uh, cactus flower plant, uh, that wasn't even a supplement. I actually had to go get a, uh, a, a group to actually extract that to the study. I found the study and then actually had to create and build it from scratch myself because it was not in the in public domain at all. It was not used as a supplement at all. Um, and the, the research showed that it reduced prostate issues by 80%, two published human clinical trials. And what was worse, it was actually done by a pharmaceutical company, but because the plant itself had about five different phytochemicals in it, they couldn't patent something that was complex. They have to isolate a single chemical. They jumped the study. They buried it so people wouldn't know about this. 
So I felt as my job, hey, wait, you've got something that is clinically proven, published human studies that is effective for prostate health when it's the number one cancer killer, fastest growing cancer killer of men in the United States. That can help people. I need to get this out here. And if it takes putting it in a pill to get making it more accessible to people who've never even heard of it, never seen the research, never been exposed to it and can benefit them. Yeah, I'm a 50 year old male. I don't want to see anybody die from prostate cancer. I don't know anybody who would or much less suffer from it. I mean, when you get your prostate removed, your sex drive can just evaporate. And then what do you have? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to help. I'm, I'm trying my best to do that by, by being an intermediary between the real science that shows effectiveness, plants that aren't making it to the mainstream, and then trying to educate people on what they are, what they do, and how they can help their lives. So that, that's what I'm trying to offer. I felt there was a big gap in that. There were sports nutrition companies out there just marketing crap to get you stimulated and jacked and, you know, put steroid bodybuilders on their covers who were using 15 different drugs to get that look. It's not because of the supplements that they got there. Those are super physiological results and it's impossible to get them from supplements. If you think you're going to look like John Ronnie Coleman, who I actually worked with at PSN, if you think you're going to look like that by taking the supplements, you are being misinformed. <laughs> yeah, not to mention his genetics. Like a lot of these people that don't realize they're genetically gifted. Let's call it for what it is, right? They've also been totally. doing it their entire life. And, you know, I love what you're saying because, too, I think a lot of people have to do research and, you know, learn about many different things when it comes to their health and wellness, because we all may have different things. We have to figure out again, what works best for us. If I have cancer, or if I have leukemia, do I have prostate issues, do, whatever the case may be, or just say, I'm, I want to prevent things in the future because of my family had a history of this. It's up to yeah, me to totally. do this. But again, you got to figure out how it works for you again, by experimenting. And I think a lot of people are scared, which is understandable. I think, Totally. I can see this about myself too. A lot of times, the more you learn about your body, the more you get nervous, you're, you get intimidated. And I think also, right, you realize how you're not going to be here for that long, right? You're, you're also, as you're aging, you're like, holy shit. I think a lot of people are chasing the youth, which is understandable. But also at the same time, you know, a lot of us are going to die from an illness or it could be sudden, but most likely we are going to die from one reason or another. We don't know what that is a lot of times, but um, we just got to take but the, the empowering part is that there is ways you can follow, not have to follow that path. Most people equate getting older with all the disease states and the disease states don't come because of chronological age. You can live to a hundred in perfect health and die in your sleep. Yep. That's totally possible. The, the problem comes when you do bad habits, when you consume things that cause dysfunction in the body that turn into advanced disease states and then end up being debilitating or, or death causing. 90% of the uh, disease states, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, heart attacks, strokes, um, all are based on diet and are reversible and preventable with changes in diet and exercise. It's really that simple. That should be empowering. Yeah. That is you taking back responsibility for your life. If I do this, I get a better result for me. You know, you yeah. should be proud to have that information because that's information that you can use to empower yourself to make decisions. If you surrender your, your power over to the doctors, over to the pharmaceutical companies, over to the insurance companies, you say, oh, you're gonna take care of me, over to the surgeons. Well, then you just surrendered all your power to them and you're not taking responsibility for your end results in life. And your health is yours, take it back, you know? <laughs> For sure. And it's real simple. You have control, but you do need to make changes. You cannot do the same thing and expect a different result. That's the, uh, what's the definition of insanity. <laughs> my daughter, my oldest daughter had a liver transplant at one years old. And my other daughter, my younger daughter has type one diabetes. And the one thing I always wanted to teach them, which they're doing amazing, but it, you know, my daughter even still has the same liver from one years old and she's 24 now. And, wow. you know, and 
Oh, okay. yeah, both of them are just, um, but I wanted to set an example for them, but I want them again, like I keep talking about, you keep talking about is, you know, just being responsible for your health independently, no matter, even when my oldest daughter, when she wanted to play a lot of sports, people were all like, she had a liver transplant. She, you know, she had, you can't do, I'm like, no, I'm going to make her as <laughs> indestructible as possible. She wants to play soccer. She's playing soccer. She wanted basketball. We're doing basketball. We did football. We, we just kept going swimming you know, lacrosse. I kept doing all these things. They thought it was crazy, but I want people to understand too. They have a lot in the tank. They may have not even discovered their true potential when it comes to their genetics. They don't realize the type of shape that they really can get in because, you know, if I would have programmed my daughter and I remember two years old, I think it was one of the doctors said, you have to get her in daycare. I'm like, oh my God, she, she takes meds to lower her immune, her immune system's very low, she'll get sick. She's like, no, we have to build up her immune system. We also wanna get her around a lot of other children. We want her to be active, because I was always like, I, I would have actually, who knows what I would have done. And then it clicked in my head, I wanna make her stronger, I need to get her out. If she wasn't doing that, we were going to theme parks, we were in Chicago, she kept getting sick. I said, we have to go back to Florida, but again, these are all things that people have to understand about themselves. If you live in the Midwest or the East Coast, you're depressed because of the weather or because of the food and you want to move to Florida, it's going to inspire you. Do it. I'm just saying you want to get in a healthier climate or a healthier environment in general, meet healthier people. You got to do it. So that's all we could do, my friend. I'm gonna, I got my buddy Strong Arm Sports. I got to introduce you to him, Mordecai Williams. Oh, He's awesome. Awesome. You may have ran into some some shows. He does a lot of bodybuilding shows, powerlifting, but he does rugby. Nice. He does them all. He really loves all type of sports. He's. I did a podcast with him. He's one of my original guests and close friends. I had a clothing line called Sore Loser Wear. It was a clothing line for people who hated to lose. Uh, our slogan was, it didn't matter if you won or lose, uh, as long as you came in first. It was kind of that type of attitude. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I got to introduce you to him and I haven't worn his shirt yet. I used to, I do him in the gym and everything. And I said, let me do one with a podcast. I'm going to send this to him because you two are, you know, you're doing shows and things like that. But, you know, Jeff, tell them where they can find you officially, your website or whatever you feel like saying, because I love introducing people that do things that are much different than I do, take a totally different approach with health and wellness. And I just want to try to give my audience, you know, a voice of others. So if you can do that. Yeah, sure. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, um, Jeff Palmer. It's, it's G-E-O-F-F -F Palmer. Um, my father is an English professor, so <laughs> that's where that came from. Um, but Jeff Palmer, you can follow uh, us on Clean Machine Fit on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And every Thursday at 4 p.m., I do a Facebook Live, usually covering some of the latest research. So I uh, grow the latest studies that are applicable to health and nutrition and fitness. And uh, just uh, last Thursday, I did one on l -Beba. It's an amino acid that is amazing. So if you want to learn how to uh, how our body actually uses um, uh, branch chain amino acids to increase l -Beba, which then helps burn more fat, convert it to brown fat so that it's easier to burn off and, uh, and, and, and a whole host of other healthy benefits, lower triglycerides, lower VLDL cholesterol, all of that good stuff. Really amazing research. So I talk about that research, uh, all the latest research coming out um, every Thursday at 4 p.m. And then you can catch us on YouTube at Clean Machine Online. That's awesome. And if I get people, I love referring other people. And you live in Florida and so do I. I'm in Orlando, but I'm all over the state of Florida all the time. My girlfriend oversees 25 stores. So you're in South Florida, right, as well? Or yeah, I'm in uh, Pompano. We're looking to actually move to the ocean front. So <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. We definitely got to, you know, network and not fall out of touch. That happens a lot of time because there's so much to learn from you. I'd love to follow some of your stuff as well. Uh, but thanks for taking time to do this. I really appreciate it. I learned so much. Oh, thank you for having me. And thank you for being such a great voice for people and, uh, and keeping them healthy and fit. Oh, you're awesome. All right. We'll wrap it up there. Again, it's a clean machine. That's your body. It's a machine, right? <laughs> Let's call it it is. It's an incredible machine. Take good care of it and it'll do good things for you. Exactly. All right.
Thank you, my man. Thank you.